We got Parker Thune of OU Insider at 247 Sports here to talk Brent Venables and Jeff Levy and what it means for the Oklahoma Sooners. Caleb Williams on the recruiting trail. And we got a new quarterback name to discuss. All that and more on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Sooners Nation. Welcome to Locked On Sooners. Today's episode is brought to you by NetSuite. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. Head to netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA for special end of year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Thank you for joining me. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. And joining me today, we got a very special guest. It's the guy that he just knows the recruiting business and we're happy to have him all the time and it, it just a great OU follower. So if you're not reading his work over at OUinsider.com powered by 247 sports, then you're not getting what you need on OU content. So we got Parker. Parker, how you doing, man? Doing fantastic, John. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's great to, to talk to you, catch up with you. We got a lot of things to discuss. Things have been really moving fast since Brent Venables finally officially made that was made the hire. So tell me, just give me your initial reaction to that, just overall thoughts on Brent Venables before we move on to Jeff Lebby and how it might impact Oklahoma. Yeah, I think, look, I really do believe this was as good a hire as Oklahoma could have made. Uh, and if you would have told any Oklahoma fan two weeks ago that they were going to lose Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch and there was going to be a very legitimate argument that they upgraded at both coordinator positions, they probably would have laughed you off the face of the earth, right? But I think that's the reality at Oklahoma right now. I really do truly believe that, at least as it pertains to getting ready to compete in the SEC, Brent Venables and Jeff Levy are more equipped in that capacity, more equipped to lead Oklahoma in that capacity than Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch were. And especially when you look at the fact that they're bringing in Jerry Schmidt, their old strength coach to replace Benny Wiley. This is actually, I do believe, a net positive for Oklahoma. And again, that probably would have sounded absurd to any Sooner fan that you'd told as recently as two weeks ago that they were going to lose their head coach and half their coaching staff. But I think what Venables brings to the table is a resume that arguably makes him the most qualified first time head coach in the history of college football. He's coached in eight national championship games. He's won three of them. He's only ever worked for three bosses in Bill Snyder, Bob Stoops and Dabo Sweeney. So obviously loyalty is part and parcel of what Brent Venables is as a football coach. And also he's been coordinating defense at an exceedingly high level, John for over two decades. And so right. Ever since he took over as co-defensive coordinator for the Sooners in 1999, I think it's been pretty clear that he is among the top of his profession when it comes to being able to coordinate defense and being able to instill a culture and a vision in a greater capacity than that. What's amazing to me is as you look at Brent Venables is his ability to continue to put out excellent defenses as the game has changed. I mean, Yes, the spread was kind of being introduced into early 2000s, but there was still a lot of like traditional I formation offenses. You, I mean, Nebraska was still running some option. It's it's a totally different game now, and yet his defenses have continually been at or near the top of the college football NCAA rankings. And so it's it's pretty impressive that he's been able to continually evolve as the game has changed. And what is it necessarily that that makes him – able to do that is it something that's that's just a a value that he holds as far as i want to build my defense this way that allows him to to continue to put great defenses together i think it's more so john the fact that he's simply unpredictable as a defensive play caller and you ask just about anybody that's played or coached against brent venables about the nature of his defense, that's exactly what they'll tell you. It's completely unpredictable. And so he's a guy that will throw anything and everything at you at any given juncture. And that's, I think, what has made him so effective. You go back to the 2018 National Championship game, which Brent Venables pretty much single-handedly won for Clemson, powered down that vaunted Alabama offense into a tongue of Aloha, who to that point had had one of the most prolific seasons for any quarterback in the history of college football. Brent Venables made him look like he was thrown with his off hand all night. And that's just mm -hmm. a testament 
to his capacity to disguise his coverages, to bring pressure, to surprise a quarterback with the different looks that he throws at you. And all in all, I think if you had to if you had to take one performance from Brent, Brent Venables as a defensive play caller and cite it as the example of, OK, this is how good this guy can be when he's at the top of his game. It's that 2018 national title game. And now kind of turning to turn to the offensive side. I mean, we've got Jeff Levy and we're not going to we don't need to dig into some of the stuff that comes from, from his past. I've, I've talked about it several times in, this week. Uh, but just talk about the guy as an offensive coordinator, player caller. What does it bring to Oklahoma? Yeah, so Lebby, you know, in terms of his experience as an offensive coordinator, it's limited, right? He was a passing game coordinator from 2014 to 2016 at Baylor. Didn't take over full play calling duties until the following season, 2017, which he spent at Southeastern University, which is an NAIA school in Lakeland, Florida. But then he gets the gig with Josh Heupel at UCF as the OC there from 2018 to 2019, then jumps on with Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss in 2020. And obviously here in 2021, Ole Miss has one of the best offenses in college football with Matt Corral at the helm. And so I think what Jeff Levy brings to the table more than anything else uh, is he's a guy who's got he's got that youth, right? That youth that Lincoln Riley has, that exuberance for the game, and kind of a relentlessly aggressive mentality, which I think was Oklahoma fans' main point of contention with Lincoln Riley uh, very, very often in the past. And if there was one critique they had of Lincoln Riley, it's well, he gets a little conservative with his play calling at times. That's not going to be the case with Jeff Lebby. Let me tell you, Jeff Lebby is a guy. Uh, I mean, he's going to throw it all out there every single down, every single game, and he's never going to let up. And you've seen that with his offenses at Ole Miss. And you've seen the fact that, you know, he is willing and very able to take shots down the field, to press with tempo and to put 50 to 60 points on the board at times. And I think that's something that they need. They need something that's going to be aggressive that matches an aggressive defense. Like that, if that's going to be, a mentality on one side of the ball. It needs to be the mentality for the whole program. You can't have aggressive defense, conservative offense, or aggressive offense and conservative defense. It just kind of all has to work in concert with one another. Now let's look at kind of the big elephant in the room, and that's Caleb Williams. How does this impact him potentially? I mean, we haven't heard anything from him, which to me, no news is good news, but I could – could just be totally reading the situation wrong. What's your take on where we're at in that situation? Do you think Caleb Williams is going to stay? Well, no, no news is definitely good news, John. I'll tell you that much. And the reality is, is that Caleb Williams and his family were made a part of the decision-making process, or at least looped into the conversation uh, when they were going through the process of bringing on Brent Venables and bringing on Jeff Levy. None of that was done in isolation. Caleb Williams and his parents were made very aware of everything that was going on. And so I think there's been a concerted effort at both the administration uh, level and then also since Brett, Brett, Brent, I almost called him Brett, I guess just because I see so many people mistakenly calling him Brett Venables that it well, was almost the best like there is, the best Freudian there was, and the best there ever will be. <laughs> but no, as soon as Brent Venables and Jeff Lebby got to campus, uh, that was a priority for them was making sure they kept Caleb Williams engaged and kept him on campus. And so uh, I don't think that effort is going to be for naught in the end. I've said it many times. I'll say it again. My gut tells me that Caleb Williams is back in an Oklahoma uniform in 2022. That said, it's not a guarantee. I think we need to see how the next few weeks unfold. Uh, we could learn a lot from how the recruiting class and the recruiting cycle here in uh, the class of 2022 eventually wraps uh, and how much momentum Oklahoma has in that capacity. But look, at the end of the day, Caleb Williams is a Sooner. He recruited a lot of his very good friends to Oklahoma to play alongside him. I don't get the sense he's going to be easily peeled away from Norman. And so particularly with the new vision that Venables and Levy bring to the table and both of their respective enthusiasms for the game and their craft, I think that's very appealing to the average football player in general. And especially for a guy like Caleb Williams, who has visions of winning a national championship and being one of the greatest players that's ever put on the Crimson and Cream. I feel like he's a guy that's going to get on board with Levy and Venables vision. And I think if he goes and looks at what Levy did with Matt Corral, you got to love the 11 rushing touchdowns from a guy that maybe he's got some athleticism, but maybe not to that extent. Caleb Williams has to be kind of licking his chops. Like, Hey, if he can get 11, how many can I get running the football? 
And so I, I think there's a lot of potential there and, and he's got to see it. I mean, Matt Corral went from a guy that was a solid quarterback, a good quarterback played well in the sec in 2020 to a potential Heisman contender finished top 10 in the Heisman voting in 2021. So, I mean, I think that speaks to the, the level of uh, play calling the development that went, that went on down there at Ole Miss. And so very interesting things to, to watch there. And I, I think you're right. I, my gut says he stays just the idea. No, no news is good news, uh, but you never know what's going to happen in college football. Things change rapidly as we found out over the last couple of weeks. Coming up next, let's see how this is impacting the Oklahoma Sooners on the recruiting trail because there's been a lot of really interesting things going down over the last couple of days. But first, I want to talk to you about – I can't find the read. What is it called? On location. Sorry, guys. Let's talk for a minute about kicking things up a notch for the big game, the grand stage, the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 56 at SoFi is less than 100 days away and on location – the official hospitality partner of the NFL is the only place to score a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package to the big game. Select your exact seats and choose from elite experiences featuring an exclusive pre-game celebration with college stars turned NFL legends Troy Aikman, Marcus Allen, and Tim Brown. Plus accommodations at five-star LA hotels and food by the great Wolfgang Puck. Visit onlocationexp.com slash sb56 for more information or search Super Bowl on location. And I want to talk to you about NetSuite as well. This is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this is how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software. To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. With visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR planning, budgeting, and more, NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. Over 27,000 businesses already use NetSuite, and right now, through the end of the year, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program to ready to those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA. Head to netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA for special end of year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. That's netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA. And thank you again so much for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. Appreciate all the interaction and comments on the YouTube channel. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And again, over on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Now, Parker. A lot of interesting things going down on the recruiting trail. And this was bound to happen, right? When you have a coaching change and you you kind of see an evolution of where they're going to prioritize uh, their offers, prioritize their time. Now, Brent Venables has spent a lot of time just kind of reconnecting with commits that ha- that were already committed to OU, just kind of making sure to, to stay in touch with those guys. But we're starting to see offers go out as well. And the thing that's really struck me is – we're seeing a lot of uh, interaction, a lot of offers go to guys from Florida. Is that something that you've kind of picked up on as you're just kind of watching things develop? It was interesting to see how that all unfolded over the last 48 hours or so, John, and particularly the last four offers that you look at, uh, Lewis Carter, Troy Bowles, you have Dijon Johnson, and then, oh gosh, I just wrote about him earlier. Who would that fourth guy have been? It was, gosh, I swear I have it written here somewhere. Anyway, regardless, um, Keon Keeley, there you go. That's yeah. who That's who was stuck on my mind. The Notre Dame commit, the five-star commit in the class of 2023. All four of those guys hail from the Tampa area. And so it's pretty clear that Ven- Brent Venables has a sense of where his hotbed is going to be, or at least where he wants it to be. And six of the seven offers, six of the seven new offers that have gone out, like you said, Florida guys, the seventh guy, the only non-Floridian is a guy that is essentially an honorary Floridian because he was committed to the University of Florida for months and months and months. The quarterback, Nick Evers from Flower Mound High School in Texas, and make no mistake, he has as much sway in in the state of Florida as just about anybody by virtue of the fact that he spent a ton of time there. Like I said, he was pledged to the Gators, built a ton of great relationships during the time that he was pretty sure uh, that he was going to play his college ball down there in Gainesville. And so uh, it's 
it's definitely, I don't think it's a coincidence that you've seen all those offers go out to Florida guys. But uh, again, looking ahead to the 2023 class, uh, it'll be interesting to see where else Brent Venables kind of pinpoints uh, where he wants the focus of his recruiting efforts to be. Down the stretch in 2022, though, it's a lot more just about getting what you can get and making sure you close strong on the guys that you have a legitimate shot with. And let me tell you this, Oklahoma is in a phenomenal place with both Nick Evers, the recent Florida decommitted quarterback that I just talked about, and then his good buddy Jason or uh, Jaden Gibson, excuse me, uh, four-star wide receiver out of Winter Garden, Florida, which is the hometown of one Danny Stutzman. So there you go, a little bit of Sooner tie there. But uh, Gibson as well uh, decommitted from Florida yesterday, so he's back on the open market. Both those guys are going to be taking official visits to Oklahoma this weekend. And there's a lot of optimism that both of them could end up wearing the crimson cream when it's all said and done. Yeah, you're starting to see like crystal ball projections kind of favor the Sooners a little bit in this realm. And it's a bit of a, a, a change from kind of the Lincoln Riley era where, you know, he'd only go after a top quarterback like almost every other year. You know, right now they got Caleb Williams. Nick Evers is part of the 2022 class. So that brings in another potential you know, quarterback. And then, you know, um, I can't remember who wrote about it, but it was over on on three where they kind of put the the they connected the dots a little bit between Jeff Levy and Arch Manning. Now, the Mannings have a long history with Old Miss. It's hard to imagine that that changes much just because Levy leaves, but the relationship is there. And so something that may not have been kind of on the forefront for Oklahoma or even in the realm of possibility kind of oh, cracks the door open a little bit, right? I'll, I'll tell you a little secret here, John. Arch Manning and his camp, they wanted to get some love from Oklahoma. They wanted the Oklahoma offer. In fact, I was told they reached out multiple times to Lincoln Riley in an effort to start building a relationship there towards the end of an offer. And Lincoln Riley repeatedly denied to offer Arch Manning or at least cons or even consider offering him because he had his guy in Malachi Nelson. Right. And so now that Lincoln Riley is gone to USC, now that Malachi Nelson has followed him to USC, the Sooners are once again on the market for a quarterback in the 2023 class. And given the Mannings affinity, and obviously I'm not sure how extensive it is, but given their affinity for Oklahoma that is already existing, combined with the fact that you bring in Jeff Levy, a guy that the Manning camp has a very, very strong relationship with uh, when you're talking about Ole Miss's pursuit of Arch Manning. This could get really interesting. And I, I'm not comfortable. I, I wouldn't put money down on it at this point yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. But there's definitely a let there's there's a non zero chance that Arch Manning is wearing an Oklahoma Sooners uniform in the fall of 2023. So that's going to be interesting to monitor. At the very least, it's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. Oh, it will be. No doubt. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. You know, like, I, you know, over at Sooners Wire, every once in a while, these these Manning articles kind of pop up and our, our people want us to kind of engage in those or at least the, the schools that are have been engaged with Arch Manning. And we're like, oh, that's fun for them. We don't get to talk about Arch Manning. But now over in Sooners country, we get to talk about Arch Manning a little bit. Who Who is a guy that right now is kind of on the on the on the fence with Oklahoma in 2022 or has decommitted that you think is going to be a signing for Oklahoma come either early signing period or uh, signing day. Couple guys. One would be Demetrius Hunter, the four star center out of East Texas, West orange Stark. Um, I really do think he ends up back with Oklahoma at the end of the day, because I just think Bill Biedenboe's too dang good at his job for Demetrius Hunter to go anywhere else. And I think that was kind of that was the reason he decommitted initially was because there was uncertainty as to whether Bill Biedenboe was going to stick around. But now that it's clear that Biedenboe is going to be at Oklahoma uh, for the long run and he's going to stick things out with the remainder of the offensive staff, save obviously for Dennis Simmons, who followed Lincoln Riley to USC. Uh, I do think Demetrius Hunter is going to end up back with Oklahoma and Furthermore, one other guy that I would cite with regard to that whole conversation is Kobe McKenzie, the four-star 2022 linebacker out of Lubbock Cooper, who just decommitted from Oklahoma, from Oklahoma excuse me, uh, the same day that Lincoln Riley left and then committed to Texas five days later. Oklahoma had an in-home visit with him yesterday. Uh, I was told it went well. And there's, again, 
I'm not saying I'm putting money on it. I'm not predicting anything. I'm not confirming anything. But right now, it's essentially, in my mind, a coin flip between Oklahoma and Texas. There's a real good chance that Brent Venables is, is able to flip Kobe McKenzie back from the Longhorns, which would be awesome, right? Because what if Brent Venables' first pledge as the Oklahoma Sooners head coach was a flip from the Sooners' biggest rivalry? Yeah. What a, I mean, what a mic drop is that for Brent Venables yeah. if he flips their biggest rival's most recent flip from Oklahoma right on back? Yeah. Yeah, and not just a flip, but a flip flip. And that I mean that would be wild. I, I don't know if you've ever seen anything like that, but it feels like that'd be a really, really rare occasion. It would be. And I, you know, obviously I haven't been on the recruiting scene forever. So uh it may have happened in years past, and I'm just I just don't have the breadth of experience to bring it to mind. But yeah, offhand I can't recall anything like that transpiring between Oklahoma and Texas or any two bitter rivals for that matter. Yeah, well, well, we'll get more information from you here on the other side of the break, but I want to talk to you guys about Built Bar. The holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, or even better yet, than a candy bar, it's Built Bar. Filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat. But yet, it's high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. So many great flavors, like my personal favorite, the peanut butter brownie. Also love that mint brownie. And they got plenty of the... Uh, brownie, the coconut brownie chunk that's also a fan favorite of Built Bar. So go to builtbar.com, sorry, built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your next order at built.com. You can also check out the Built Puffs, the Built Boost. The, right now it's flu and cold season. If you need a boost to your immune system, go check out the Built Boost. You can get that at built.com as well. Now, Parker, how do you feel like the rest of the defensive staff is going to be made up? We're, we haven't really seen a lot of um, headway being made there. You know, Jamar Kane left. Uh, you know, we got a new guy in Miguel Chavez, 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 Chavez. Thank you. Um, that's going to be coming in the coach of defensive ends. We got, uh, uh, Thibodeau, you know, Calvin Thibodeau is now joining SMU. And so it seems to be, there's going to be a lot of turnover on the defensive side of the ball, which is a little bit surprising to me because a lot of those guys are also connected to Brent Venables just from either their playing days or, you know, even time coaching with them. So how do you feel like this is going to shake out a little bit? And we see that the offensive side of the football is going to gain, can, you know, remain very much intact, but there's going to be a lot of turnover on defense. Yeah, there will be. And as far as what it looks like personnel wise, I'll throw three names out at you guys that are currently at Clemson, but that could very realistically follow Brent Venables to Oklahoma and serve in some capacity on the Oklahoma defensive staff. One would be Todd Bates, defensive line coach out there, who is a tremendous, tremendous recruiter. Mike Reed, the highly respected secondary coach out at Clemson, and then Ted Roof, a guy that is a defensive assistant or an, a defensive analyst right now at Clemson, but he has been around the block a time or two, more than a time or two. If you look at his bio and his resume, he's made something like 16 different stops over the course of his coaching career, was the head coach at Duke briefly from, I believe, 2004 to 2007. Uh, that's been his only stint as a head coach, but was the architect of the Auburn defense that in 2010 uh, won, won the national title with Cam Newton, obviously playing the quarterback position for the Tigers that year. So Roof, a guy that brings a lot of experience to the table, but you got him, you got Mike Reed, you got Todd Bates. I think those are three likely candidates, guys that could very realistically make the move from Clemson to Oklahoma and follow Brent Venables. So again, not really clear how it's all going to shake out just yet. Uh, Miguel Chavis is on board. We know that much. Thank you, uh, social be, media. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It'll be certainly intriguing to see who else trickles away from Clemson towards Oklahoma to serve under Brent Venables. Kind of on that note, more on the recruiting side of things, you know, we're starting to see some Clemson guys decommit. The, these players that were heavily recruited by Brent Venables, um, and, and then we're, we even saw like a, a crystal ball flip by a Kansas State member of 247 Sports, um, kind of flipping Jerry uh, Kinnick. Can I pronounce that right? Kinnick. Kinnick. Thank you. Uh, to Oklahoma. Now, what are you making of that situation in particular? And then I also want to ask you, like, do you feel like Brent Venables will go after some of these Clemson decommits, or is he going to kind of play the honor card and try and be respectful of Dabo Swinney? I would imagine 
that Venables is going to decline to recruit a lot of those guys that decommit from Clemson. I, I know for a fact he's declining to recruit Jihad Campbell, uh, edge rusher that just decommitted from Clemson today, Oklahoma, and Venables. Uh, he, he basically said behind closed doors that you know we don't we don't want any part of that. That's a guy that you know it, we're we're not going to be the ones that poach Jihad Campbell from Clemson. And so uh, Campbell's back on the open market. At Texas A&M looks like the favorite to land his services, but that's just one example case study right there of a guy that it would make a lot of sense for OU to go and pursue based on Brent Venable's pre-existing relationship. But I do think they're going to play the honor card uh, with a lot of those guys. The one guy, one of one of the very few guys that I could see them making a push for would be Jaron Kanak. And let me tell you, the guy that flipped his crystal ball to favor the Sooners in Jaron Kanak's recruitment is Ryan Wallace, who uh, I, there may not be another human being that knows the state of the recruiting scene in Kansas better than Ryan Wallace. So uh, I trust his intel on that situation. I trust that the buzz for Kanak to Oklahoma is very real. That said, Kanak's a quiet kid, doesn't share a whole lot with regard to his recruitment. So I haven't picked up on anything that would lead me to enter a crystal ball for Oklahoma right now. But I do think that prospect is very much on the table because I can tell you this much, a big portion of the reason why Jaron Kanak committed to Clemson originally was because of his relationship with Brent Venables. And I think that's, I think you'll find that's the case with a lot of prospects, whether in the class of 2022 or in the class of 2023 that Clemson recruits, because we know that Brent Venables is very, very selective in the players that he does recruit. I think over the last five years, Oklahoma's offered nearly 600 players and Clemson's offered just a shade over 250. So that tells you how, <laughs> how much respect Brent Venables has for the guys that he does choose to offer. And that offer means something when it's coming from him. And so... I think what you will begin to see is the guys that Brett Medibles has developed relationships with. Again, I don't know how eager he's going to be to try and recruit them away from Clemson, uh, given the respect he has for that program and just his class as an individual. But you will find a lot of guys on the recruiting trail, a lot of guys that are trying to figure out whether they where they want to play their college ball that have built a very strong rapport with Brent Venables and have a ton of respect for him. So that could work out in Oklahoma's favor a lot sooner than a lot of people may imagine. Now, do you think that's it's going to be like a one-year kind of a thing? Like, hey, this transition's happening the, as far as the 2022 class is concerned. I'm not going to go up against Clemson to try and you know lure guys away. I mean, because how long can that last? Like, just because Clemson goes after a guy in 2023, 2024, it's like at some point it's got to be it's all fair. It's all fair game. I would say it's a one year type of deal when you're talking about the 2022 cycle, because you've already seen today, for instance, two guys that Clemson had offered under Venables in Troy Bowles and Lewis Carter, Oklahoma went out and offered them today. So I think it's more Brent Venables, you know, you're coming down the stretch here in 2022. He wants to respect what he did at Clemson and for Clemson and allow them to benefit from the work that he put in on the recruiting trail and doesn't want to interfere in that capacity. I also don't think that's the reason he's done an in-home visit with Jaron Kanak yet. And like I said, there's a good chance Jaron Kanak ends up calling Oklahoma and says, Hey, I want to come down, but I don't think Brent Venables is going to push the envelope there. I just think that's how classy of a guy he is. And that's how much respect he has for his former employer. And I, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's going to bode well for him because it allows him to kind of keep his integrity and, and it shows something to all the people that he's going to go sit across the table from in, in home visits, the coaches that he's trying to develop under him. You know, it's like what I say is what I mean. And I'm going to, I'm going to have respect and I'm going to honor um, just the way we do things and the way that I did them at Clemson. It's going to carry over. We're not just going to go out and, and for competitiveness sake, just start poaching guys just because it could make us a better team. We're going to still do things the right way. And I think that's a really strong way to start off his tenure at Oklahoma. It may be a harder way because here are some guys that could be easily brought into Oklahoma, but I think it's the right thing to do. And I think that's going to, I think that's going to speak well of him, uh, not just amongst Sooner fans, but just in the college football community altogether. 
Agreed. And again, I'm not sure how much of an issue it is and how much it affects Oklahoma beyond the 2022 cycle. So I think that's something that only comes into play for about the next two months. And after that, you know, it's open season. But it does say a lot about Brent Venables, and I really do think that's one of the many reasons why Oklahoma hit a home run. I mean, Albert Pujols over the train tracks with this hire. Yeah. Now, why'd you got to bring up Albert Pujols, man? That that guy still. At least you didn't bring up David Freese. That could have that could have made things a lot worse. We might not have been friends anymore. But I mean, Albert Pujols is like, I mean, I'm a Texas Rangers fan, so. No, nah, okay. The St. Yeah, Louis Cardinals, sense. and then with the Los Angeles Angels, it's just like the guy. He just he he just hurts me. He just hurts me. Great player, but he's hurt my heart so many times. But hey, Parker, that's some great stuff, man. As always, we're so thankful to have you on on the show. As always, we appreciate it. Make sure you all go check out Parker's work at OUinsider.com, part of Two Four Seven Sports. Also, check him out on Ninety Four Seven The Ref in uh, Norman and fourteen. Sorry, fourteen hundred Sports Talk, fourteen hundred The Ref in Norman. 94.7 in Oklahoma City. You can also download the app and check them out there with Mike Steely from noon to 2, Monday through Friday. It's always a great show. Make sure you listen to those guys. Parker, thank you so much for jumping on the show. I appreciate you, John. Take care, and we'll do it again. That's right. Hope you all have a great weekend. Enjoy. It's it's your first weekend of no – I mean, you have Army-Navy, so there you go. There's your college football watching for this weekend. Make sure you check that out. But it's about to be bowl season. Enjoy the final couple weeks before early signing period. And go check out some Oklahoma men's basketball. Some fun things happening, even though they had a loss recently to Butler. Still a lot of fun. Uh, a great roster to, to follow. So make sure you go check that out. That's going to do it for today's show. Catch you back here on Monday. For Parker Thune, I'm John Williams. Boomer Sooner. <laughs>